Hi hey guys, Buildzoid here. So this is going to be another Buildzoid versus PC part picker video because the previous one was pretty successful. And uh, yeah, um, a lot of people basically asked, hey Buildzoid, what, what would you build if you were building a high-end build? Well, here's a high-end build um, and we can get it a lot cheaper without actually losing much performance. So that like the same as previous video, we're going to take a look at the like, here, here's kind of like the ideal, but we can also make it more cost effective right so and there, there's like a few few th changes that basically make a huge difference to the price so this the the goal with this build was very much just like top like top like absolutely best gaming performance that that was the focus right so we of course have the 9900k uh so we're on z390 and then we have a 2080 ti and that that's pretty much like as long as you have those two parts you're pretty much guaranteed really great uh, gaming performance. Now, to help the 9900K out, um, we also have some nice uh, nice uh, DDR4 memory um, and a motherboard. And this is actually 32 gigs of RAM, depending, like, because if we were running 16 gigs of RAM, I would go for a different motherboard. So that, that's kind of that. Um, and uh, yeah, like, you don't need 32 gigs for gaming. It's just like, th this is... Um, kind of, like, there's not really much you would be able to change to make this any, well, no, honestly, like, this is already in the, very much into the, like, diminishing returns area, so, yeah, th this is already quite excessive, in my opinion, <laughs> if you're just gonna be playing games, but, um, yeah, like, th this is what I would be, like, th this is, you know, excessive, the excessive gaming build by Buildzoid, basically, so, um, th this is my take on what that would look like. Now, I've still stuck, like, here's the thing. I'm not really big into, like, storage at all. Like, I like having lots of storage, and I like having it cheap. That's basically the only two things I care about with storage. And it helps when it's an SSD and not a hard drive, because SSDs are significantly faster than hard drives, but I don't necessarily care about, like, NVMEs or something like that. So I wouldn't, like... Uh, I wouldn't necessarily take my own advice on what to use for storage, right? Especially once once you're looking at this kind of price range where I guess most people would be like, yeah, I'll, you know, uh, cut something else and, and get, uh, get better storage. But uh, I mean, we all know I don't review SSDs. So, you know, what, what did you expect? Um, anyway, so yeah, we're still in the one terabyte crucial MX500 SSD because I just like... The only thing I would do is maybe add two of them or three of them or like more of them, basically. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily actually change the, the SSD itself. Like, I, I think this is fine. It's cheap. It's it's terabyte. It's an SSD. It's going to be pretty damn fast. Um, that, that's all I care about. So um, the other thing we have in here is a 2080 Ti, uh, which is the, the Strix card. Because basically, out of the custom 2080 Ti's, if we ignore the fact that the Hall of Fame and the Kingpin Edition exist, the Strix is, in my opinion, the best one. Um, definitely PCB-wise, it's one one of the best. And even heatsink-wise, it actually performs really, really well. So I don't really see a reason to get a different 2080 Ti other than there's other 2080 Ti's that are significantly cheaper. But this is obviously, like, we have 32 gigs of RAM in here, so cost effectiveness is not a concern with this, like, with this current configuration right now. Also, the 9900K is quite excessive for gaming as well. So, um, and, you know, and then, then we're going to stuff it into a $54 steel box because I have zero interest in paying significant amount, well, large amounts of money for steel boxes. I know a lot of people are like into their nice cases. I, I don't get it. It's, it's a steel box. Why are you paying $200 for a steel box? I will never understand, but sure. And for the power supply, we're looking at a EVGA Supernova G3 750 watt. Uh, this is a little bit on the, like, a little bit on the excessive side, but basically I'm thinking, like, if you really push a 2080 Ti, you can get them to do, you know, 400 to 500 watts worth of power consumption, and uh, 9900Ks aren't that hard to get to 200 watts either, so it's just like, okay, so if you really push the setup, your PSU is still going to be a little bit larger than the absolute worst case scenario w when overclocked on this thing, so... That's kind of the logic behind behind that. And then I went for the Supernova G3 because this just has really good reviews in general. So the size, it's a little bit excessive. But the other thing is, is like the Supernova G3 650 watt is barely any cheaper, 
right? Like, yeah, that would be the correct size for this build, but it's also only $10 cheaper, at which point it's just like, well, I'll just take the 100 watts extra. Thank you very much. I mean, it's not it's not like it's gonna, it doesn't have, like, the, there's not really any major negative, uh, you know, downs. well, there's not really any major downsides to having a 750 watt PSU instead of a 650. It's not like we're putting a, you know, if you had a 1500 watt, then, then there might be concerns for like your idle efficiency being just god awful. Um, but, uh, yeah, this, this is a 750 versus a 650. There's not going to be that much difference. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of that. Now then, um, let's start down costing. So th this is obviously like, you know, what, what, what if it was nice? So the first thing I'd chop out would be the, the 2080 Ti because fun fact, uh, cheaper 2080 Ti's are still 2080 Ti's. So they're still really freaking fast. Right, and so in that case, I would go for the EVGA Black right here for eleven hundred dollars because uh, I'm guess I'm a bit biased towards EVGA. The thing is, the other cards are basically the same price, and I think this is a triple slot cooler, whereas the other two are two slots. So bigger heat sinks or better heat sinks, though this technically is also like more than a two slot card. So I guess this would also be like I've not seen a review for this card. I know for a fact that this thing's like solid. I don't know about that card. I, I don't remember reading any reviews for it. So yeah, we'll we'll go with the with the EVGA Black uh, 2080 Ti, and that immediately knocks you know knocks us down to around two and a half thousand dollars instead of twenty seven hundred. So it's a n nice uh, you know nice drop in uh, cost. Um, for the motherboard, initially you know I went with the and I don't want it to open in a new window. I want it in a new tab. So. Initially, you know, we're going with the Z390 Master because it kind of has everything. Um, and it's not that like the, the other motherboard I would go for is not that much cheaper. So, you know, you have the you have the BIOS, like you have dual BIOS, you have the dual BIOS controls because Gigabyte's dual BIOS is on it. Like it is helpful under certain circumstances, but a lot of the time it just gets in the way. So having the option to switch it off is great. Um, you have a postcode, you have a power button, you have a reset button, like the board has basically everything you could want. Uh, it has a, you know, great VRM. I don't really see a reason to go for, well, like th this, like you can spend more money on a motherboard. It's just not really going to achieve anything, um, at that point. You know, um, so that that's kind of why I'm like, okay, go with the Z390 Aorus Master because also this is a T topology board. So with uh, four, like 32 gigs of memory in a four by eight configuration, this thing's gonna absolutely, like it's gonna do really, really well. Um, and with memory overclocking, and I wouldn't be surprised if you were able to get, you know, especially like this kit, you might be able to push it all the way to like 4,400 um, with a master, uh, depending on how lucky you get with also your CPU and somewhat the motherboard, like, there is variance motherboard to motherboard. So, um, yeah, like, you know, no guarantees, but 4133 on 4x8 is actually should be absolutely no problem to, to run on a master. So, yeah, um, and so that that's kind of why I went with this board. But the thing is, you could save some money on the motherboard because, you know, like the... Because the, Gigabyte also makes the Z390 Ultra. Um, and the Z390 Ultra basically takes most of the features of the master, right? So like the master had a really nice IO section and everything. So if we go for the, and we're just going to stick to gigabyte. Um, so yeah, if, if we go with the ultra, the ultra is basically, you get the VR, this has a different VRM from the master, but, uh, most of the feature set Right, like you have most of the rear, similar rear I/O configuration. It's not the same. Significantly less USB ports, as far as I'm concerned, but it's still a lot. Um, but you also lose the the dual BIOS controls, but you do still keep the postcode, which I think is super helpful. Right, like the the postcode alone is just like a really, to me, that's a really big reason to go for this board over a lot of the other boards in say this price range. Um, and then it has the same. Like the memory config, like the memory layout on this motherboard is exactly the same as the master. So this should do really well with a four by eight configuration in terms of overclocking as well. Uh, it'll not do so well with a two by eight, and I know that for a fact because, but like the the master, 
with two by eight kind of suffers the ultra is going to do the same thing because it's basically like what, what goes on between the cpu and the memory slots is the same thing for both boards so yeah th this would be kind of the option where you know you could save some money on a on a cheaper motherboard so now we're going into the you know sub two and a half thousand dollar category and we really haven't lost any performance yet, as far as I'm concerned, right? Like, okay, we might have lost a little bit, a couple percentage points on the 2080 Ti. Um, but the thing is, is like with 2080 Ti's, it's really more silicon lottery than what how the card is built. Um, I'm maybe on average the Strix cards hit 20 megahertz higher, which still is just like who cares? It's 20 megahertz, barely makes a difference. Um, but, you know, that's, like, kind of the differences between, like, good GPUs and just, like... Because this is a reference card with a with a bigger heatsink on it, whereas the Strix is, like, a full custom PCB and, it, like, a really nice custom PCB. But I really doubt that PCB makes more than 50 megahertz worth of core clock difference. And that means it barely... Like, that's, like, what? The 2080 Ti's run at, like, over 2 gigahertz. So if you do the math on that, right, it's just like 50 megahertz out of two gigahertz is like not very much. So it's a couple percentage points worth of performance difference for $200 more. So yeah, you know, you really haven't lost, like you don't lose a bunch of performance by going with a cheaper GPU because they, they don't overclock very, there's not big differences in the overclocking between them. So unless you get really unlucky and then just, but the thing is you can get unlucky with a Strix as well. Right, like anything, like as long as the card comes, does the factory overclock, like that's the only thing you're guaranteed. If it doesn't overclock another 10 megahertz above that, too bad, right? Like that's the silicon lottery. Um, so anyway, at this point, um, I would honestly drop the 9900K uh, because like, well, depends on what you're doing. I per like my, because I'm thinking like my personal system has 32 gigs of RAM. And it has a Ryzen 7 1700, which is like significantly slower than a 9900K. But the thing is, I'm really good at just leaving stuff open all the time. So I run out of RAM pretty quickly because, yeah, I, I just leave stuff open everywhere. Um, so if you're like me and you don't like closing things that really should be closed, like, say, games. I sometimes just leave games running in the background because I forget about them. Tab out and then do something and then why is this still running? Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, if you're like me, you'd prefer 32 gigs of RAM to a 9900K, because, like, yeah, th this has, you know, more CPU performance, but the thing is, you you can kind of save a lot of money in that, that department, so I would go straight to a 9700K, right, like, I would just drop to a 9700K, and bam, you save a bunch more money, um, and at this point, um, the only thing left to cut out is kind of like, okay, so we, we may as well, now we could save money sort of two ways on the memory. We could go with less memory or we could go with different memory. So re Micron Revision E is basically the second best thing to Samsung b die as far as I'm concerned. So, but, but there, there's like, the, the, so we can now like, so those sticks were like $134 a piece and they were amazing. Like th those were absolutely, and actually I'll, I'll have to find them again. Cause those, those are great sticks. Like those are absolutely awesome memory sticks. Cause they're 4133, right? They're $134, but more importantly, they come with 18, 18, 18, 38 timings. Like, admittedly at like 1.4 volts, but 18, 18, 18. Like, damn. <laughs> okay, like, this is great. So the XMP on these is really like, right off the bat, this is moving. So you'd basically enable XMP. You wouldn't really, like, you could mess with the primaries, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because if you, like, the thing is you can make much bigger, you can make a much bigger impact on your sub timings than on your primary timings. And, um... Uh, so like your secondaries and your tertiaries, there you can make much more difference because um, from 18, 18, like you might be able to push 16, 17, 17 or 17, 17, 17. Um, honestly, I would just keep the 18, 18, 38, bump up the voltage to maybe 1.5 volts, see if I can do like 42, 66 or, you know, some like I'd raise the frequency basically is what I, I would go for. I wouldn't really try to mess with the primaries. And then I'd tighten up all the sub timings because the sub timings tend to hit the ground pretty much regardless of 
anything. Like, you can run the same TRRDs, the same TFAW, almost the same TRFC, like, uh, same TC... Well, no, TCWL gets a little bit looser, but TCWL is tied to... somewhat tied to your primaries. So, like, you can run a very... You can significantly drop TCWL. TWR doesn't really care about frequency. You can run it really low, pretty much. Like, you can run it just as low at 3200 megahertz as you can at, like, 4400 megahertz. So, there's a bunch of timings where they're going to hit the ground and they're going to stay there, even up to, like, ridiculous frequencies. So, I wouldn't bother with messing with the primaries because generally, like, you, you might be able to knock these, like, one or two, you know, one one or two steps down. But your some of your sub-timings, like default t uh t four for example tends to be around 30 right and you can drop it all the way down to 16 on on good kits so it's just like oh, that that's where you're going to see like and trfc defaults to around like 600 to 700 once you're in the 4000 megahertz range but on bdi you can run it around 300 so that's kind of like where you're going to see the biggest performance differences. You're not going to get it from, you know, going from 18, 18, 38 to 17, 17, 17, 34 or something, right? Like it's barely going to make a difference compared to tightening, uh, tightening up the subs. So th like this, I like, you know, great starting point, basically this kit is, and it's a hundred, I, I, I can't believe it's so damn cheap. <laughs> like, seriously, this is like this. Like, this spec is is great, especially for that price tag. So, yeah, I'm really impressed with that kit. And that's basically why I went for it. Now, if we wanted to save a bunch of money, because let's say we, we just don't care about that much about the memory, well, we all know what memory kit I'm going to go for at this point, right? Um, there, there's no mystery to what I'm about to choose. I just need to find it. Uh, show more. All oh, right. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Is the cast latency. We want 15. We don't necessarily want 2 by 8 and we want it made by Crucial. And I'm not sure if the 4... if... no, that's 4 by 6... wait, 4 by 16 for 3... damn, that's that's cheap. <laughs> it is impressively cheap. Um, but I wanted lowest price per gigabyte. Well, you could go for that. So that's apparently... Oh, yeah, that is. Wait, is that the right part number? It is. Yeah, so I have four of these. Like, I literally own four of these. Like, I bought them. And that's why I now keep recommending them. Because I have four of them. They lo do anything from, like, low 4,000... Like, low to mid 4,000s. Very easy to do on these memory sticks. So, there. You know, and uh, that saves us uh, a bunch of money. And now we're at $2,200. So, yeah, and, and we've barely, like, still very little difference to overall performance, right? Oh, it's, is that a mail-in rebate? That better not be a mail-in rebate. Oh, it's just some kind of, oh, there's a promo code. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, so, yeah. 20, you know, we're at $2,200. We've, like, you could go back up to the 9900K at this point if you wanted to, right? Like, depends on your priorities. Um, and so from here, we can go, we, we can still go a bit cheaper. Um, but this is like, we're, we're starting to really hit the limit of how cheap this configuration can get. So at this point, we're going to drop some of the memory sticks because we're at 32 gigs of RAM. So, you know, th that's kind of the next step down. You can still game on less than 32 gigs of RAM. And since we now no longer need four DIMM slots on the motherboard, uh, we get the option to go into motherboards that are actually really, really good at memory overclocking on two memory sticks, which means ITX because four DIMMs just loses to two DIMMs. It's really that simple. Um, and uh, here we kind of have like, oh, is this finally back in stock? Yay, it's back in, I think, yay, it's it's back in stock, isn't it? Yay, it's in stock. So yeah, I would totally go for this MSI Z390i Gaming Edge AC. This thing is killer at memory overclocking, like absolutely amazing at memory overclocking. Now, the main issue with Mini ITX is that, you know, I did go for the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 cooler, and on ATX boards, that doesn't really, like, that's not an issue. You have plenty of space. The PCIe slot is like one slot down from the CPU, so the the 
the the big air cooler isn't an issue. And I went for the Dark Rock Pro because it's not knocked to a color scheme and it performs basically exactly the same as an NHD 15, at least according to tech power ups like I'm just using the most recent review from them because they include a whole bunch of like that's the best way to get all of the different coolers into the into the charts. So yeah, it gets basically the same temperatures as an Octo NHD 15. And noise wise, you're looking at what are you looking? At? Where's the be quiet? Yeah, you get the same noise as a where's the 15? Oh, the 15 actually is slightly quieter. So, yeah, you could also go for an Octuion HD 15 if, if you're so inclined, because that, that does 36 dBA. And this is still really, really quiet, and it's significantly quiet quieter than, like, a lot of the different AIOs and stuff. So, yeah, but the thing is, if you're on an ITX motherboard, big air coolers are kind of a pain to deal with. So, at this point, I would go with an AIO just for uh, sort of convenience. Because, yeah, it, you know, you're on an ITX board, cramming uh, big air coolers on those, just not fun. Um, potentially, it can cause issues like memory clearance issues and that kind of thing. Though, admittedly, like the Crucial Sticks, they're, they're low, pro like they're just standard profile. So that's, that's not really a concern. And we're just going to go for a 240mm AIO because that fits into the, well, actually, I wonder if a 280 fits into the case. I'm not actually sure, but... There's our 240. Yeah, let's just go for that. Like, So I've heard terrible things about that one with like apparently people putting holes into the radiator. This one is weird, so we're not going to get that one just on the basis that it's weird. <laughs> like the pumps are integrated into the fan. Like the pumps are combined with the fans, which I think is just silly. Uh, you could go for that. And you could go for that, except I kind of trust the the fans on this one more than these. So, oh yeah, the, well, those go up to 2,000 RPM. So those are going to be louder, but they're probably going to also... Pretty sure that's going to end up like... Unless these are also to go to 2,000 RPM, this is ultimately going to give you more cooling. It's 80. Uh, you, can, you can PWM them. There, go for that one. So... Yeah, on the ITX board, you know, go for, for an AIO for, for convenience reasons. And now the thing is, this motherboard right here has one minor issue. Like, it's great at memory overclocking. It's not so great when it comes to VRM cooling. So you should probably just get a fan, like an 80 millimeter, and just zip tie it to the VRM heatsink. Um, it doesn't need to be expensive. It doesn't need to be incredible. Like we can just, yeah, bam, there, we're just going to go for that. It doesn't need to be some incredible, you know, high end fan. It just needs to, you need to force some amount of airflow over those VRM heat sinks because they do like, otherwise this board just runs pretty damn hot. Um, so yeah, if you don't want to deal with zip tying a fan to your VRM, then your other option is to go for the ASRock, uh, ITX board. But the thing about the ASRock ITX board is it's not as good at memory overclocking as the MSI. So I'm really kind of like, I'm, I'm pretty annoyed that MSI couldn't, like, if they spent like 20 bucks on a more, well, if they made the board $20 more expensive and gave it a better VRM, it would just be like the best ITX board on Z390 ever. But as it is, it's just kind of like, well, you need to zip tie a fan to the VRM if you want to like, not worry about the VR, like not have to monitor the VRM temperatures because it does run pretty damn hot. Um, whereas if you go with the the ASRock board, like th this one will just should just be fine with uh, case airflow. So because this one has a significantly better VRM, so that's kind of that. And admittedly, this board is slightly more expensive, but uh, yeah, then you can throw the fan out. Um, but this one just doesn't clock memory as well. And at this point, like. Honestly, if I was doing a gaming build for myself, I would go ITX with like a really killer memory kit. So where was the uh, team group? Well, okay. No, if you're not going, like if you don't need 32 gigs of RAM and you just want the best possible gaming performance, right? At this point, you can go back up to that 30, what was it? 4133 team group kit. Um, bam. Yeah. Straight back to this. Because 
Yeah, and we're at, you know, so at around $2,100, you, you can get some really great performance. And at this point, you could go back up to like a better 2080 Ti, I guess, right? like to the Strix one or whatever other model you prefer for looks, acoustics or whatever, right? Like, um, but but yeah, th this is kind of like the options, like I, th these are kind of the options in my opinion for like a high-end build is just like right now, I think this memory kit is an absolutely incredible deal if you want a good set of Samsung b die. Uh, otherwise I would just go for the 3000 megahertz CL15 crucial sticks, right? Like there's really no reason in my opinion to spend more money on memory. Like, like this stuff overclocks just so damn well, right? Um, and it does very specifically have to be this stuff, right? Like th this series. Now Crucial does make uh, higher bins of Micron Revision E memory, but the thing is Micron Revision E's main downsides compared to Samsung b die are basically the TRCD doesn't go that low, um, which on Intel, that also means your TRP, it doesn't go that low because on Intel, TRCD and TRP are linked. The memory controller uses the same fat value for both of them. Um, and your TRFC doesn't really get that low either. Like it can't get anywhere near as low as what you can do on BDI. So you're kind of, and even if you have a really high bin of revision E, your TRCD will actually improve a little bit, but it still won't be BDI levels. And your TRFC will improve a little bit, but it still won't be anywhere near BDI levels. So I don't see a reason to spend a lot, like to buy a high-end rev Micron Revision E because it's just never going to match even a, you know, mid-range set of BDI. Now, admittedly, a mid-range set of BDI is about twice the price of a cheap Micron, uh, you know, Micron Revision E kit. But that's kind of, you know, that, that kind of comes with the, 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 the BDI memory requirements. So... Yeah, that, that stuff's expensive. Well, you can technically get really cheap Samsung b die, but at that point it tends to suck because it seems like b die seems to have a lot of variance bin to bin. So if you buy like a, like if you buy b die that's rated, like I have a kit of b die that's rated at like 2400 CL17. It sucks. It is god awful. So um, yeah, if you buy something that's like pretty much OEM Samsung green PCB b die, it, it's really bad. Um, so you do actually need to buy something that's like halfway decently bin, but 4133 CL18, like that, that's great. Um, as far as bidding, like, like that's pretty great as far as the binning goes. So yeah, I'd be all over this and stick it in the little ITX board. And you know, th this should like the thing about the Phantom Gaming ITX is it tends to stop at around 4,400 megahertz on the memory. Whereas the MSI board, if your memory kit is capable of it, it'll do 4,800. It'll do five gig it'll even do five gigahertz but at that point you're also totally just thrashing the memory controller of the cpu so not really like i don't consider speeds in excess of 4400 practical because they're like they're just really abusive to the cpu at that point um it's really hard to run that kind of speeds table so i don't consider those worth it but up to like 4400 is just like sure go for it right um and uh yeah, so th this kit, this motherboard, and at this point you could also go back up to the 9900K and back up to the, like, yeah. So th there's tons of, like, tons of options, right? So th that's kind of that. Think 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 that covers all of the different configurations that, that I would do is just like... And yeah, I would would I would totally put the little ITX board into a full ITX case because ITX cases cost more money. And you know, nobody's ever complained like it does you don't lose performance for having a great big amount of empty space between the PSU and the GPU. Like it doesn't make a difference, right? It might look weird, but it doesn't actually affect performance. So I don't see the point in in getting a IT, like, unless you care about space, right? Like, if you care about the space your system, like, system occupies, then sure, go for the ITX case. But honestly, I would still stick the ITX board into an ITX case. Like, why Why not, <laughs> right? You get better radiator support. You get more room for activities. So if you, if you have, like, if you don't care about aesthetics at all, you actually now have a bunch of empty space where you can put all of the cables that you could, couldn't figure out how to route, right? Like, that kind of thing. So... Yeah, um, th those are the builds I, w I would go for. Is just like, um, 
basically MSI game, like motherboard would basically be MSI gaming edge ITX, um, or then the phantom gaming ITX and then the gigabyte ultra gigabyte master. Right. And that, that would be like the highest end board I would go for. Um, and well, yeah, the, the thing is, is like, if you wanted a two dim ATX motherboard, you're pretty much stuck with like an apex 11, like apex 11 from Asus, which is a great board. It's just like, that's, you know, it's also like $300. And I'm not sure how available it is in the US. Um, and then there's the Z390 Dark from EVGA, which is $500. <laughs> and like, even, it seems to also be completely out of stock at this point. Uh, well, you can get it from EVGA. So that one, you know, is just like, you could go for that. I just think at that point, you're really like, that, that is excessive to an extreme, in my opinion, for, for like the motherboard. And I do really like the Z390 Dark. It's just like, if you're just playing games, I have no idea why you would want to spend $500 on a motherboard when you could also spend like under 200 and get like 90% of the memory overclocking performance of a of something like a five, like, cause that's the thing is like the $500 board, the main difference you see is it overclocks memory better. Right. And the VRM runs cooler, but honestly, by the time you hit $300, well, actually with the ultra already, VRM temperatures are not a concern. So it's just like, I don't know why, why you'd spend that much. Right. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the, what if Buildzoid design, you know, was doing a, I guess, high end, uh, Z, you know, high end gaming build. And it's just like 9,700K, 9,900K and this set of motherboards and then this memory, right? So yeah, hopefully, and for the storage, like, you know, I ultimate, like this is for, I consider this basically a placeholder because it's like, yeah, I would legitimately, I myself would legitimately go for that. I know a lot of people are like, I would go for NVMe or whatever. And it's just like, I don't care, right? So it, I wouldn't necessarily put too much weight on my storage recommendations because I'm really kind of like, I don't care for the speed that much. So yeah, um, that's that's kind of that. Um, so I, I forgot how to do an outro for the video. So, you know, here goes the worst world's worst transition. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I do have a Patreon. If you want to support me directly, there's a link to that down in the description, uh, down in the description. And then there's of course Teespring. If you want to buy AHOC merch, like shirts, stickers, posters, socks, hoodies, um, yeah, and there's a link to that down in the description as well. Both of those help out immensely with running the channel and, you know, sharing the videos does, does that too. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, that's it for the video. So thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.